My name is Christopher Glover. I am the field CTO at Big ID. Um, is that enough? Or you probably saw that up on the screen. Well, actually, I've been in data management for the last 25 years. I started off as a developer, uh, became a, a, an engineer, an architect, an administrator, and then I worked for 12 years for two small internet companies, eBay and PayPal. Um, at PayPal, I spent my time in operations architecture, and then I uh, went on to lead enterprise data architecture for them, where I got introduced to a lot of the different areas of data management, including lineage, or functions of data management, including lineage. Um, and then I went on to lead um, CDI, or what we used to call customer data integration, up at the eBay Inc. level, where I had responsibility for the data for eBay, PayPal, StubHub, Red Laser, Milo, Ware, and another 20 subsidiaries of the company. And my teams were responsible for integrating all of this data, building out the technology that didn't exist back then, which was a 45 billion node graph, um, to process this data on a daily basis and turn it into 2.4 billion people that we tracked across the globe. Um, since then, since eBay, I have spent time at two startups. One was a complete failure, and the other one was a marginal success. Um, I am now at Big ID, and I'm very excited to talk about our technologies when I'm at conferences like this. Um, but is that enough? Do you know who I am now and how I got here? Well, actually, you don't. I'm not going to tell you about how I flew here from the United States, from the west coast of the United States, and I had to take multiple tests to be here with you today. Uh, but I am going to talk about how I got here as an example to the planet Earth. So growing up, I can talk about my lineage. Uh, you know, I grew up like most people. I knew who my parents were. I knew who my grandparents were. Um, we were Catholic, and we're not very inventive with our names and, and when we're Catholic. Um, but I knew that I, you know, that I had, uh, you know, Grandpa John and Grandma Mary, and Mary had a brother named Paul. And if that was enough, but at a certain point. You, want, you get curious about like, where did I really come from? Um, and thankfully there are tools that can, can help you that. I mean, the source of this information is really just the family gene genealogy. Um, but you can look at other things like church records that might start to fill in the blanks for you. So in my lineage, uh, on my mother's side and my grandmother's side, uh, her parents actually came on a boat from Ireland into the United States. And the names were Kilkenny and O'Fallon. Uh, they were very helpful when they came to the United States and they said, well, O'Fallon's a little bit too Irish, so why don't we just take the O off and we became Fallon. Um, but this is some of my lineage and that, of course, the gaps in my lineage are filled in by going and looking at church records, actually going to Ireland. Thankfully, there are services today like Ancestry, which like, imports all of that data and makes it available to you. Um, but is this enough? Do I, do I really fully know my lineage yet? Um, well, it turns out on An Ancestry, you can actually do things like add your DNA. Um, and other people add their DNA too and Ancestry in the background is kind of matching all this together and saying, hey, you know what, these two DNAs are really close. And it turns out that, well, uh, Uncle, uh, Uncle Paul there uh, was having some relationships that the church might not have uh, expressly uh, condoned. Uh, it was a bit frowned upon. And it turns out by close DNA, there's a pretty good chance that uh, that Paul had some other, you know, some, some some children that the church and the family didn't really know about or it wasn't really talked about. But you see that these are tools that really fill in the gap in my personal lineage. The lineage for data is not that different. There are tools that are going to help you fill in those gaps. And I'm going to talk a little bit about those gaps today that you're going to find in your own lineage. Um, so yes, common. Uh, common gaps in the lineage. Sorry, this screen is actually one screen off. So, um, One of the first ones you're going to find is legacy systems. 
uh, the lineage tools that are out there that have been traditionally out there are limited by what they can scan or what the connectors that they have. Some of the lineage tools call them harvesters, um, but they're limited by the amount of harvesters. And as for a vendor like me, it's really difficult to keep up with all the different technologies. You know, at Big ID, we have like 100 plus connectors that we created, but still I run into environments where there is some technology like vSAM files, or somebody has managed to keep up a tandem system after like 10, 10 15, 20 years of de-support. And they ask us, well, can you look at that data and bring it in? Uh, but this is gonna be one of the gaps in your environment is that there's not going to be easy ways to get some of this data off of these legacy systems. And in particular, in the case of operational metadata, which is what lineage really comes from, uh, you're going to have a hard time getting and filling in that gap. Um, again, one off. Um, the other one to think about is that your vendors are also, like if you were an IBM shop, or you're a Microsoft shop, or you're an Oracle shop, uh, the tools that they're going to provide you to look at the lineage in those, in those technologies are going to be limited to those technologies and that ecosystem that they are in. And uh, it's not going to extend beyond those borders. Similarly, if you look at cloud vendors, uh, they have tools that can provide you some of the lineage of all the technology that's in that cloud environment, but they're not going to extend beyond and generally, and I know somebody will come up with an exception, but generally they're not going to extend beyond the borders of that cloud, and they're not going to let you see the rest of the data, and this is going to be another gap in the lineage, or at least a challenge for the lineage. And the last one I'm going to talk about is really that there are going to be other tools in the environment that are limited in the amount of operational metadata they can emit. A good example of this is your homegrown tools in your environment. You build them because they're purpose specific, they're cheap and they're fast and they're easy to develop. They might be a little more costly to support over time and everybody skips that part. But you build these things in your environment, they do a job, but they may not be having an API to them to really collect all the operational metadata. They may not be logging enough information for you to actually pull out the lineage metadata that's in them. Um, this is going to be another gap in your environment, and it's particularly going to be a gap for any lineage vendor that you bring in. They are not going to have a connector that's going to go to your homegrown tool that's not emitting any operational metadata. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what you should expect from modern lineage tools. Um, traditionally, the lineage tools have been limited in these ways, and they've been limited to the connectors that they have. Um, so that's the first one I'm going to talk about, is that you should expect that it covers most of the technologies in your environment. Um, so for Big ID and other companies that I've worked for, and even when I sat in the seat at eBay and bought software over the years, I was always surprised at the questions that didn't get asked in that process of interviewing a vendor. Um, you should ask, you should make a list. What are all the technologies in your environment? And then you specifically ask the vendor, do you support all these things? Um, and then you should pause, you know, and if the answer that they come back to you is, yes, we absolutely support all of these technologies for you, uh, you should pause for dramatic effect, you should thank them for their time, and you should show them to the door. Because there's no way that any vendor is going to support unless you've just started your business yesterday, you are a brand new modern stack of technology that everyone else is using out there on modern versions or recent versions, uh, the vendor is not going to be able to support all the technologies. There is going to be gaps in your lineage and you're going to have to figure out how to fill those in. You should also expect that there's going to be some bit of intelligence in the lineage software that you, you're using. And the intelligence that many people are talking about, if you walk this floor out here, almost every vendor is going to tell you that they have some machine learning or AI story or something that they're using in the background that magically enhances what they do. Uh, I'm going to tell you that it's you should ask a lot of questions about that. Like, how are they using ML? 
Is it supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised learning? What were the training sets that they used? Generally, they're not training on your data. They're training on other sets of data that output a, an algorithm that they can then use and apply to problems in your environment. Uh, but there are a lot of other algorithms that don't have to be machine learning. There can be advanced rule-based algorithms that can help you detect things like gaps in your lineage and infer what that gap was. Um, so let me talk about some of those some of those opportunities for inferred. It's fairly easy to infer directionality. If you can look at two sets of data, and my company has a uh, has an has an algorithm or a process called clustering. And we're able to look at all the data in the environment. We're able to say, hey, you know, this this table over here and this one over here, or this table and this file, or these files, they look really similar. They have the same sets of data. And when we classify the data, it's the same classification. If we count the rows, they're similar size and rows. Um, we even look at some of the data and we know that like these sets, these call this these actual values that are over here in this table look like the values that are over here in this table. I can apply some simpler algorithms to that that can tell me this one came before this one. It might be the dates that are in here, timestamps that were implemented, it might be the look of the data, it might be that this one has more rows in it than the other one, has different rows than the other one. But it can start to infer the lineage. I may not know that there was some process either that between these two systems or another process that fed these two systems, but I can infer the directionality that this came before this. Um, I can do that with deductive reasoning in the environment as well. I can look for other areas where you know your lineage. I know there is a tool, it might be Informatica or some other ETL tool that is feeding these systems that are in the environment. Um, I may be able to look at that and say, hey, the pattern here is that this data from this file came and it was read, it was transformed, and the output of that transformation was a set of data that looked like this. I can pattern match on that and actually say, well, I see that same pattern over here. I don't necessarily know that it was Informatica that did all this work for you, but the patterns match, and it's most likely that there's some Informatica process that generated this data. Um, I can also reverse engineer uh, the transformation logic. There are simple algorithms that can look at and can say, hey, uh, this table over here has data in it and it is the full address. And over in this table, I only have partial address. I can partially map on these two things and I can suggest there was some data protection process in the middle that masked out the first part of that address or the ending part of that address or transformed it into something else that I could actually use with my customer service agents so that they could talk to people on the phone. Uh, but these are techniques plus ML and AI that can start to infer the metadata or the operational metadata that would fill in the gaps in your lineage. <laughs> and it seems like I was fooled. I am uh, looking at something that's one slide off, so I think I just talked to this slide. Uh, the last thing that you should expect is that uh, they should be well, in, you know, if you have a lineage tool, it should be well integrated with the other functions of data management in your environment and the other tools that you have. It's very important that you have stewardship. If you're starting to infer metadata or a tool is starting to predict the metadata that you have that is filling in these gaps in the lineage, it needs to be presented to someone who is an SME, a data steward, a custodian in the environment or an owner of that data that can say, yeah, actually there is this process there that transforms this data and turns it into this. I'm going to validate that for everybody. Quality is important in, in this as well. Quality is also a piece that gives you clues about the data that is in the lineage. It's another process that's in your environment that can feed you the clues that can fill in those gaps. Um, it's important to know in your lineage that when you look at it, 
you should be able to click on something and say, what is the quality of this data and what is the source of that quality? What were the processes that were attached to this that provided me that quality metric on this data? You should expect that from your lineage tools. Uh, there should be a catalog where you can see all of this data and the lineage should be connected into that catalog so that when people are exploring the data or searching for data in your environment and deciding on what data that they're going to use as an analyst, as a data scientist, as a report, uh, somebody who's generating reports, uh, you should be able to look and find that data and then you should be able to find out what the lineage of that data is, what the quality is, and it should all be in one catalog. Uh, Privacy is important in this. Lineage is a, is a requirement. Uh, ROPA, which is record of processing, is something that has roots in lineage. If you can actually show the lineage, you can show that, that pro record of process. And again, somebody from the privacy office can validate that for you. Uh, security is a piece, too. It's important to know where this data come, came from. If you have a breach or you, if you have something that happens in your environment, understanding what brought this data together and where it came from is important. So expect that whatever you have for your lineage tool can integrate into the other tools in the environment. So I'm going to give you a brief expectation. I'm talking about lineage today for Big ID. Uh, we have some of the capabilities, and I described some of them, the cluster analysis that we have. We have something called correlation that allows us to tie all the entities in your environment to, uh, to the data. So I can find data in your environment, I can tie that to people, I can tie that to products, I can tie that to transactions. Uh, these are the capabilities that might build a lineage, and it's something that's building our lineage story. Uh, I want to make sure that what we have at Big ID is going to do something better for you, which is be able to infer those gaps in the lineage, be able to fill in that story for you. Uh, uh, so what you're seeing here is capabilities that are in the product right now. We actually have this. You can actually document your lineage. You can document your regular processing. What we don't have is some of the intelligence applied in the background, which is going to come out over the next two quarters. Uh, just to remind you, Big ID is a platform. Um, if you look at the bottom of the cylinders here, we have hundreds of connectors. That coverage is so important to you to be able to look across your environments, look at structured, unstructured, document stores, uh, any place that you store data, there is a connector in Big ID that can connect to those things. We have teams of people that are developing connectors. We work with our customers. If there is some legacy product in the environment, and it makes sense, we can develop connectors that actually get you access and get you the lineage data from that. Uh, up in the middle tier of this is all the intelligence that we have in Big ID. So uh, a lot of people think of us as a data discovery tool. We are not just discovering technical metadata and pulling it in from dictionaries inside of databases. We are cataloging, uh, cataloging that data. We are classifying that data. We are correlating it to the other entities and environment. And then we are clustering that data to be able to tell you where all the duplicate sets of data are in your environment and eventually the lineage between all those sets and where they came from. Um, at the top layer here is that we have applications that sit on top of this platform. So while we are extremely strong at data discovery and privacy and security applications, uh, we, I just got reminded of my time, sorry. Uh, we have a set of applications that sit on top. People can build their own applications. Vendors bring applications to that marketplace, and we provide applications. Lineage is an application that will show up in that environment for us. So I actually set this up for 20 minutes, and I think that was the expectation for this talk, and I've just hit that mark, actually. Uh, but they just said I have 10 minutes left. Um, so I'm going to open it up for questions if there's anything that I can answer for you about lineage and inferred metadata that fills in the gaps for you in the lineage. And I'm going to have to put on headphones to be able to hear anybody if you've got a question. There's one there. Oh, this is terrible. Uh, hi, uh, uh, my question is, uh, if you were to be starting a data management journey, what would your first steps be in a large organization? 
Um, so I've done this. Uh, luckily, that's an easy question for me. Uh, the first thing is really understanding your environment and documenting all the processes that you have in the environment, the data, generating a catalog and an inventory of your data understanding that process. It's really what brought me to actually study lineage. Uh, when I took over enterprise data architecture at PayPal, I brought in a consulting team that came in and they generated these great big maps for me of all the data. It was impressive. It was like the entire wall of my office had this great vision of like the data and how it flowed through the environment. But there were these gray areas in there. And one of those gray areas is we, uh, eBay, PayPal back then used to use Terra data which was an extremely large platform for the company uh, and there was this massive gray area in there and I'm like well what is this and they're like well that's all the BT scripts that are in there that are transforming the data into the final version that you're using for analytics um, there were about 10,000 scripts in there for BT and there was really no way to infer the lineage out of that you could write tools, but it was not going to be a very effective way to actually see the lineage and draw it out. So it was a big gap in my lineage. So I've been on that journey, but the first step is really understanding your environment. It's one of the easier functions of data management to stand up is just inventory your data, create a catalog, make it available to all the data uh, employees in the company. Any other questions? This was easy for you all. Uh, one more. Hi. Um, in terms of the tool that you mentioned, uh, does it also look at um, you know data access, providing access to users um, to specific data? You know, for example, if there is personal information or sensitive information, how do we actually provide access to that data? Does it? Does this platform manages that as well? So this platform has some capabilities in there, but what I think is important in that one slide that I showed you is that you have the integrations with the other tools in your environment and that you're pulling that into a common metadata repository. So security information is another source of metadata that should show up in that environment. It's attached to the lineage, it's attached to all the other functions in your data management. Um, so yes, we have integrations. Uh, you should stop by the booth. There's definitely a lot that we can talk about with security and what our capabilities are, but also the partners that we work with. Um, but it is a big important part, is being able to look at that lineage and not only understand the impact, what's going to happen afterwards, or the, the lineage or the provenance of that data, what came before and what process is attached to it, but who had access to it along the way and who had, even beyond that, who had responsibility for the processes that touched that data. Yes. Thanks. Hiya. Uh, you, you mentioned about uh, scanning various data sources and uh, about uh, identifying personal data. Uh, does it uh, actually store the data within its environment? Uh, if so, uh, how do we manage uh, masking or encrypting this personal information? Okay, so I'm going to shortcut that answer because we don't. Um, we actually collect the metadata. We do process the data. So unlike some, some data discovery tools that are just looking at the technical metadata, um, we actually interrogate the data itself. So we look at some sampling of the instance data that's in there. We're able to classify that data according to your data classification standards. Um, but after that, we're not storing or persisting any of that data. And, and it's really that is the general value. Unless you're going to do things like take and have a semantic model that's generated there that turns into a knowledge graph where you actually need instance data, or you're going to use this to inform something like uh, customer 360 or CDP, um, that is where a case where you actually have to store and persist data. But there are other tools in the environment to do that. What we do is provide the rich metadata that informs those other tools. Hi there. I just wanted to understand. Uh, so, if we uh, were to bring like Big ID as a data governance tool uh, within an enterprise, uh, and what would it require to start delivering value? Like, what are the prerequisites in terms of uh, data sources that you need to plug into, or uh, where you can and can you do it small? 
iteratively rather than going always a big bang at an end across the enterprise. Absolutely, I mean, most of our customers start that way. They start with one department where they're inventorying the data. Um, they're allowing, and you know, we have an application called stewardship, which, allow, which is an element of data governance, which allows you to curate that data and um, use stewards to validate what we're bringing in. I mean, we're trying to save companies from the work that you have with data management. I've been doing this for 25 years. It's an incredible amount of work to be able to stand up a data management practice. Uh, we're trying to create tools at Big ID that help you with that, get you to the 80%. I'm not going to promise 100% for you, but being able to bring it, automate that collection of data, generating that inventory that you have, creating the catalog, tying it to business terms that you may have imported into a glossary, and then using data stewards to validate that. So if I can get you to 80% and the stewards are validating and, and filling in the 20% gap there, then I've succeeded. And you can start small and you can expand from there. We have federated architecture, we have distributed architecture. It's very easy to start in one place and expand out to the rest of the organization. And it's normally a success story that does that for you. You have a success in one area of your company and then other areas want to be successful with data as well. I think we had one more up front. Um. How do you know when you're done with data quality? Can you talk a bit more about it and um, <laughs> who you're thinking of as the main customers when you um, think about uh, quality metrics? Um, so quality metrics are pervasive. They're, the business is going to be the customer, IT is going to be your customer, marketing, advertising, everyone depends on this data quality. Um, another thing I hear a lot is like, where do you implement the data quality? Well, you implement it along the entire life cycle of the data. It starts from when you import or when you, uh, when the data ingresses into the environment or it comes in through a transactional system. Quality really starts there. And, and simple examples are, are uh, address verification. When you put in your address, it really is that your address? Does it look like this? I mean, that's, that's an instance of quality that happened right when you get it. Um, uh, I want to make sure that I'm answering your question, sorry. <laughs> Can you hand the mic back? I, I actually lost track a little bit of your question there. All right, I'll finish it in one minute, I promise. Yeah, so how do you know when you're done? How do you like know when you're, you're done? Yeah, with quality. When no one ever comes to my desk and tells me that they've got a problem with the data quality. When they can actually click on that element in there and they can fix their own problems and they can actually say, ah, I see where this data came from. Somebody made a change last week to this process that's in the lineage of my data. And ah, that's probably what's kind of screwed up the whole thing for me here. Um, that is nirvana. I don't know that you're ever done. But I mean, that is what I would say is done for data quality in that life cycle of that data. Is if you can provide that visibility so that somebody can solve their own problems. So I always worked on the other on the on the end side of that data chain. I also had the opportunity in operations to work on the beginning of that chain, and being able to see and have that visibility of your lineage is so important both ways. Because something fails in IT in the operations side and the transactional side of the world, I definitely don't want people to figure it out later and tomorrow that there's something messed up. I want to be proactive and be able to say. Okay, the, here are the 10, 100 places that this is going to impact, and I'm going to send out emails to those people so that they don't show up at my desk. Um, but so quality goes on forever. I don't think that you ever get, quote, done. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, is it possible, please, for you to take your rubbish with you? Thank you. Thank you.